Hi, everybody. Welcome to story time. Nice uh, for whoever is joining us today. It's great that you're here. My name is Elizabeth, and we have some great stories for you today. Get, I'll give everyone a chance to just get settled for a second here. <sighs> I guess it is time. Let's get started. Let's say hello to everyone. Can I see your hands? Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as fast as we can. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as slow as we can. Hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as high as we can. Hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as low as we can. Hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as loud as we can. Hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as soft as we can. Great job, everybody. Can I see your hands? Open them, shut them. Open them, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open them, shut them, open them, shut them, lay them on your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, creep them, creepy, creepy, creep them, right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open wide your little mouth, ah, but do not let them in. Shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, just like this, this, this. Roll them, roll them, roll them, roll them. Blow a little kiss. Mwah. Nice job, everyone. Well, it's time to find out what our letter of the day is today. And that is the letter T. Let's think about some things that start with T. What's an animal that might crawl very, very slowly? I'm thinking of a turtle or a tortoise. Let's see, another animal would be a tiger. Uh, a food would be some tacos. Well, we have T stories today because we have actually stories about the number three. And the number three starts with T. So all of our stories are going to have three of something in them today. And before we get started, let's take our big stretch out wide. Big stretch up tall. Give yourself a hug. Tap your knee. Can you find your knee? Tap your nose. Here's your nose. Uh, find your ear. Here's your ear. And rub your elbow. Nice job. One more big stretch out wide. Big stretch up tall. Ah. All right. Well, we are going to start our first story today. I just have to pull up my notes. This one is called Peace at Last. And if you want to do a certain part with me, there's a part where Papa Bear is going to say, Oh, no, I can't stand this. Can we try that together? Oh, no, I can't stand 
this, and you'll know when it's time to say that. It was late at night. Mama Bear, Papa Bear, and Baby Bear all went to bed. Well, Papa Bear wasn't very tired yet, but he climbed into bed and he tried to go to sleep. But Mama Bear started snoring. And this is where you can join me. And Papa Bear said, oh no, I can't stand this. So he went to go see if he could sleep in Baby Bear's room. But Baby Bear was not asleep either. He was laying in bed pretending to be an airplane with his arms out. Ow, meow, meow. Oh no, I can't stand this, said Papa Bear. So he got up and he went to go sleep in the living room. He laid down on the couch and he closed his eyes. But the cuckoo clock was going tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock, cuckoo, cuckoo. Oh, oh no, I can't stand this, said Papa Bear, and he went to go sleep in the kitchen. He curled up next to the refrigerator and he closed his eyes, but the faucet was going drip, drop, drip, drop, drip, drop, and the refrigerator was going mmm. Oh no, said Papa Bear, I can't stand this. So he got up and he went outside to sleep in the garden. Well, you would not believe the noises Papa Bear heard out there. There were owls, whoo, whoo, flying overhead, and snuffle, 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 hedgehogs crawling in the garden, and meow, said one of the big cats on the garden wall. Meow. Oh, no. I can't stand this, said Papa Bear. So he went off to sleep in the car. It was cold in the car and pretty uncomfortable. But Papa Bear was so tired <sighs> that he didn't notice. He was just falling asleep when the birds started to sing, tweet, 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 and the sun popped up over the horizon. Shine, shine, tweet, 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 shine, shine. Oh no, said Papa Bear, I can't stand this. So he got up and he went back into the house. Oh, he climbed the stairs and he got back into his own bed. Baby Bear had fallen fast asleep. He was no longer being an airplane. Mama Bear had turned over. She wasn't snoring anymore. And he closed his eyes. Peace at last, he said to himself. But all of a sudden, bring, bring, went the alarm clock. Bring. Mama Bear sat up oh, and opened her eyes. Good morning, dear, she said. Did you have a nice sleep? Uh, not a very nice sleep, no, said Papa Bear. Well, never mind, said Mama Bear. I'll bring you uh, the mail and a nice cup of tea. And when she got back, she found Papa Bear sound asleep. <sighs> the end. Nice listening, everybody. All right, let's do a little stretch. Let's see, let's be pirates. You can stand up for this if you would like. When I was one, 
I sucked my thumb on the day I went to sea. I jumped on board a pirate ship and the captain said to me, Oh, you go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. When I was two, I tied my shoe on the day I went to sea. I jumped on board a pirate ship and the captain said to me, Oh, you go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. When I was three, that's our word of the day, I tapped my knee on the day I went to sea. I jumped on board a pirate ship and the captain said to me, Oh, you go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. When I was four, I shut the door on the day I went to sea. I jumped on board a pirate ship and the captain said to me, Oh, you go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. Last one. When I was five, I danced and jived on the day I went to sea. I jumped on board a pirate ship and the captain said to me, Oh, you go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. Yay! Great job, everybody. Let's take a seat back down if you're not sitting already. And can I see your fingers? I have ten fingers. They all belong to me. I can make them do things. Do you want to see? I can make them jump high. I can make them jump low. I can fold them tight and hold them just so. I can squeeze them tight. I can open them wide. I can wave them all around. I can make them all hide. I can make them jump high. I can make them jump low. I can fold them tight and hold them just so. All right, our next story today is called The Three Little Javelinas. Let me get a little closer here. Now this is probably a story actually that most of you are familiar with. It's a Southwestern adaptation of The Three Little Pigs. So we'll get to maybe learn some new words. Once upon a time, way out in the desert, there were three little javelinas. Javelinas are wild, hairy, southwestern cousins of pigs. There they are. Their heads were hairy, their backs were hairy, and their bony legs, all the way down to their hard little hooves, were very hairy. But their snouts were soft and pink. One day, the three little javelinas trotted away to seek their fortunes. In this hot, dry land, the sky was almost always blue. Steep purple mountains looked down on the desert where the cactus forests grew. Soon, the little javelinas came to a spot where the path divided, and each one went a different way. The first little javelina wandered along lazily at first. He didn't see the dust storm whirling across the desert until it caught him. The whirlwind flew away and left the little javelina sitting in a heap of tumbleweeds. Brushing himself off, he said, I'll build a house with them. And in no time at all, he did. Then... Along came you-know-who, Coyote. He ran through the desert so quickly and so quietly that he was almost invisible. In, this, in fact, this was only one of Coyote's many magical tricks. He laughed when he saw the tumbleweed house and smelled the javelina inside. Mmm, <laughs> a tender little piggy, he thought. Coyote was tired of eating mice and rabbits. 
he called out sweetly, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, shouted the first javelina, who had quite a lot of hair on his chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said Coyote. Ready? Can we all do it? And he huffed and he puffed and he blew the little tumbleweed house away. But in an all the hullabaloo, the first little javelina escaped and he went looking for his brother and sister. Coyote, who was very sneaky, tiptoed along behind. The second little javelina walked for miles among giant cactus plants called saguaros. They held their ripe red fruit high in the sky, but they made almost no shade and the little javelina grew hot. Then he came upon a Native American woman who was gathering sticks from inside a dried up cactus. She was one of the desert people. She planned to use these long sticks called saguaro ribs to knock down the sweet cactus fruit. The second little javelina said, please, may I have some sticks to build a house? And she said, yes. When he was finished building his house, he lay down in the shade. Then his brother arrived, panting from the heat, and the second little javelina moved over and made a place for him. Pretty soon, Coyote found the saguaro rib house. He used his magic to make his voice sound just like another javelina's. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, he called out. But the javelinas were suspicious. The second one cried, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Bah, thought Coyote, I'm not going to eat your hair. Then he smiled, showing all of his sharp teeth. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Ready? So he huffed and he puffed and all the saguaro ribs came tumbling down but the two little javelinas escaped into the desert. Still not discouraged, Coyote followed. Sometimes his magic did fail, but then he usually came up with another trick. The third javelina trotted through the beautiful Palo Verde trees with green trunks and yellow flowers. She saw a snake sliding by, smooth as oil. A hawk floated round and round above her. Then she came to a place where a man was making adobe bricks from mud and straw. The bricks lay on the ground baking in the sun. The third little javelina thought for a moment and said, May I please just have a few adobes to build a house? Si, sí, answered the man, which means yes in Spanish, the brickmaker's language. So the third little javelina built herself a solid little adobe house, cool in the summer and warm in the winter. When her brothers found her, she welcomed them in and locked the door behind them. Coyote followed their trail. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, he called. By the, by the three little javelinas looked out the window. This time, Coyote pretended to be very old and weak with no teeth and a sore paw, but they were not fooled. No, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin called the third little javelina. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said Coyote. He grinned, thinking of the delicious pig dinner to come. Just try it, shouted the third little javelina. So Coyote huffed and puffed, ready? But the adobe bricks did not budge. And Coyote tried again. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. <sighs> the three little javelinas covered their hairy ears, but nothing happened. The javelinas peeked out the window. The tip of Coyote's raggedy tail whisked right past their noses. He was climbing upon the tin roof. Next, Coyote used his magic to make himself very skinny. <gasps> the stove pipe, gasped the third little javelina. 
Quickly, she lit a fire inside her wood stove. What a feast it will be, Coyote said to himself. He squeezed into the stovepipe. I think I'll have them with some red hot chili sauce. Whoosh! Sizzle! Then the three little javelinas heard an amazing noise. It was not a bark, it was not a cackle, it was not a howl, it was not a scream. It was all of those sounds together. Yip, 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 yow! Away, away ran a puff of smoke shaped like a coyote. The three little javelinas lived happily ever after in the adobe house. And if you ever hear coyote's voice, ow! way out in the desert at night. Well, you know what he's remembering. The end. Great listening, everybody. That's a little bit of a longer story. All right, let's see. We have time for one more story. Absolutely. But first, let's see. Let's just, let's stand up and get moving a little bit. Let's go to the moon. Ready? Zoom, zoom, zoom. We're going to the moon. Zoom, zoom, zoom. We're going to the moon. If you want to take a trip, climb aboard my rocket ship. Zoom, zoom, zoom. We're going to the moon in five, four, three, two, one. Blast off! Great job. Let's try it again. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. If you want to take a trip, climb aboard my rocket ship. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. In five, four, three, two, one, blast off! Nice job, everybody. All right, we can sit back down for our last story. This is a fun one. And if you can join me, this story is called Go to Sleep Gecko. And there's a part where we all say, Gecko, Gecko, Gecko. We say that three times. Let's try it together. Gecko, Gecko, Gecko. Great job. All right. Well, one night, Elephant heard a noise outside his window, and it was Gecko, Gecko, Gecko. Gecko, what are you doing? It's late. Go home and go to sleep, Gecko. I can't sleep, said Gecko. The fireflies are flitting all around my house. They are blinking their lights on and off and on and off and on and off. Ugh, they've Got, they've got to stop. You've got to do something about it. They're keeping me awake. Elephant, you are the village boss. Make the fireflies stop. <sighs> I'll talk to the fireflies in the morning, said Elephant. Now go home and go to sleep, Gecko. And the next day, sure enough, Elephant talked to the fireflies. He said, is it true that you are flashing your lights on and off and on and off and you're keeping Gecko awake all night? Well, Yes, but we have to blink our lights all night. Buffalo leaves piles in the road, and without the lights, someone will step in them and pee you. Hmm, said Elephant. That's very thoughtful, Fireflies. Keep doing what you're doing. Well, that night, Gecko was back. Gecko, Gecko, Gecko. Elephant said, oh, Gecko, it is late. Go home and go to sleep. Gecko! Gecko said, I can't sleep. The fireflies are still blinking. Elephant said, well, the fireflies need to blink. Buffalo leaves piles in the roads, and if the fireflies don't shine their lights, then someone will step in them and pee you. Gecko said, well, talk to Buffalo then. You are the village boss. You've got to do something about this. All right, I'll talk to Gecko. I'll talk to Buffalo in the morning said Elephant. Now go home and go to sleep, Gecko. The next day, Elephant talked to Buffalo. She said, is it true 
You have been dropping piles in the road. Oh yes, said Buffalo. Rain washes holes in the road, and I fill them the best I know how. Someone could step in a hole and stumble and get hurt. I'm just trying to help. That's very thoughtful, Buffalo. Keep doing what you're doing, said Elephant. Well, that night, sure enough, gacko, 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 outside Elephant's window. Elephant said, ugh, gacko, it's late. Go home and go to sleep, gacko. Elephant said, or gacko said, the fireflies are still blinking. Didn't you talk to Buffalo? I did talk to Buffalo, said Elephant, and Buffalo has to leave piles in the road because the rain washes holes, and if someone stepped in a hole, they could trip and get hurt. Hmm. Well, then talk to the rain. You're the village boss. You've got to do something. All right, I'll talk to the rain tomorrow, said Elephant, but for now, go home and go to sleep, Gecko. And the next day, Elephant went and talked to the rain. Is it true that you wash holes in the road every afternoon? Oh, yes. I rain hard every afternoon to make puddles for the mosquitoes, said the rain. If the puddles dry up, the mosquitoes will die. If there's no more mosquitoes, there's no more food for gecko to eat. I rain hard every day. <gasps> That's very thoughtful, said Elephant. Keep doing what you're doing. Well, that night, at midnight, Elephant heard gecko outside. Gecko, gecko, gecko. Go. He got out of bed and he went outside and said, Gecko, listen carefully. If the rain doesn't rain every afternoon, there will be no puddles. If there are no puddles, there will be no mosquitoes. If there are no mosquitoes, you will have nothing to eat. Now, what do you think of that? Everything is connected and some things you just have to put up with. Gecko thought, if Elephant told rain to stop raining, Buffalo could stop filling the holes, and the fireflies could stop flashing their lights, but Gecko would have nothing to eat. <laughs> he didn't like that idea. So he went home, he closed his eyes, and he went to sleep. And outside, the fireflies blinked on and off and on and off, but some things you just have to put up with. The end. Nice job, everybody. All right, it is time for story time to be over. So let's wave goodbye. And you can always join us tomorrow for another story time at 10 a.m. or watch it anytime that you are available. Thanks so much for watching today. We'll see you soon.